In this video, we're going to discuss convergence and divergence of sequences. In particular, we're going to show the convergence or divergence of the following sequences. So A sub n denotes the nth term of a given sequence. Let's get started. So let's look at this uh, first sequence here where A sub n is equal to n raised to four plus a three n all over 4n cubed minus 2n plus 1. Recall that to show that a sequence is convergence, we need to show that the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity exists, which means it's a real number. If the limit does not exist, then we say that the sequence is divergent. So let's compute for the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity, which is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, n raised to 4 plus uh, 3n over 4n cubed minus 2n plus 1. So this is similar to computing limits of rational functions. So as n goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. But our technique when we're computing limits of a rational function at infinity is to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest degree term in the denominator, excluding the constant. So you may exclude uh, this uh, coefficient here which is equal to four. So you, we just have to divide the numerator and denominator by this uh, highest power of n in the denominator, which is equal to n cubed. So here we have limit as n goes to infinity of n raised to four. You divide this by n cubed. And then also the numerator you have here a uh, three n over n cubed and then over 4n cubed over n cubed and then minus 2n all over n cubed and then plus 1 over n cubed. And when we simplify this uh, fraction, we get uh, n minus uh, 3 over n squared over, you have here 4 minus 2 over n squared and then plus 1 over n cubed. And the limit as n goes to uh, infinity in this case is equal to, so uh, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and then this term also goes to zero. So as you can see here, our numerator goes to, okay, this one goes to infinity. So the numerator goes to infinity and the denominator goes to four. So therefore the limit of this sequence is equal to infinity. So therefore, the sequence uh, a sub n is divergent. Now let's move to the next problem. Here we're given a sub n equal to n plus uh, ln n all over n squared plus five. So we compute for the limit. So limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity, which is equal to limit of uh, n plus ln n all over n squared plus five as n goes to infinity. Now, as n goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity and also uh, the denominator uh, goes to infinity. So we have a limit of the form infinity over infinity. And if we have such a limit, so we may apply L. Hopital's rule, but for L. Hopital's rule, we need to compute for derivatives. But keep in mind here that the values of n are just uh, integers, okay? So that we can apply L. Hopital's rule. There's also a theorem that we could use here, wherein this limit is just equal to replacing the n by a continuous variable. X uh, goes to infinity, okay? It is just equal to uh, x plus uh, ln x, and then all over x squared plus five. So the reason we change uh, the variable here is, is that 
so that uh, we can apply L. Hopital's rule. Because the L. Hopital's rule, we have to compute for the derivative. And we need, uh, if you're considering only discrete values of x, then for sure it is not differentiable. Uh, at any point. So it is not differentiable at 1, at 2, 3, and so on. We'll get here, since this is an indeterminate form, uh, indeterminate form infinity over infinity, so we can apply now El Hopital's rule. So this is uh, equal to limit as x uh, goes to infinity of derivative of the numerator, so that is 1 plus 1 over x and then over the derivative of the denominator, which is equal to 2x, as x goes to infinity. All right, so as x goes to infinity, in this case, it is clear that our denominator here goes to infinity. And this one over x goes to zero. So as you can see from here, we have a limit which is in the form, this is in the form one over infinity. So one over a huge number. So that is what? A very small number. So the values of this are getting closer and closer to zero. So therefore the limit of this one is equal to zero. Since the limit exists, so therefore the sequence a sub n is convergent. Let's move to the next problem. So we have here a sub n, which is equal to n squared over square root of n cubed plus 4n. So again, we use the same idea in finding limits of a rational function. Okay, as n goes to infinity, it's like dividing the numerator and denominator by the highest power of n in the denominator. But since we have a radical, we also need to consider this radical here. So it's like our dominant term here is n raised to 3 over 2, square root of n cubed. So that is n raised to 3 halves. So we, what we can do here is to divide the numerator and denominator by n raised to 3 halves or square root of n cubed. So limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity. So this is equal to limit of n squared over square root of uh, n cubed plus uh, 4n as n goes to infinity. And then uh, we're going to so in this case, we have to multiply the numerator or divide the numerator and denominator by square root of square root of n cubed. So over one over square root of n cubed. And this will give us limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n cubed is equal to, you have there, square root of n because uh, n squared is just n raised to 4 over 2. So that will give you square root of n, square root of n all over. The denominator will be equal to, if we're going to write it in terms of a single radical, so you'll get here n cubed plus 4n all over n cube and uh, this will give you limit as n goes to infinity of square root of n all over square root of you have 1 plus 4 over n squared so as n goes to infinity so this uh, numerator here goes to infinity and the denominator goes to, so this goes to zero plus one, it goes to one. So it is clear from here that the limit is equal to infinity. So therefore, this uh, sequence is divergent. So therefore, the sequence uh, a sub n is divergent. Moving to our next problem. So we have here a sub n equal to 
ln of n plus five minus uh, ln of uh, n plus two. So when we compute for the limit of a sub n, as n goes to infinity, so that is limit of uh, this uh, difference, ln of n plus five minus uh, ln of n plus two as n goes to infinity. So take note that uh, the first term, this goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. And also the second term goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So that is an indeterminate form when it comes to limits. It's an indeterminate form infinity minus uh, infinity. And how, how do we deal with such a limit? So we need to do extra work to evaluate this limit. And one way is to do some manipulation. Okay, so probably here we can do, uh, we can combine this uh, difference into a single ln and write it down as uh, ln of, you have here n plus five all over n plus two, okay? As n goes to infinity. Now, what is the limit of uh, this uh, number inside this uh, ln? So as n goes to infinity, we know that the limit of this one is equal to one. And since uh, ln is continuous at this limit, continuous at one, we can use a theorem which states that the limit of this is just ln of the limit of this uh, expression, okay? So it's like inserting this uh, limit inside of this ln, we can do that as long as this function here is uh, continuous at the limit of this expression as n goes to infinity. But we know that the limit is equal to one. So we can do that one. This is equal to a uh, limit of uh, uh, ln of the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, n plus five all over n plus two. Again, keep in mind that you can only do this if uh, this ln, ln here, okay, this function is continuous uh, at this number, if this number exists, okay? So the limit of this one is uh, equal to one and we can clearly see that one by expressing this uh, fraction. Of course, uh, you can write it down, dividing the numerator and denominator by n, you'll get one plus uh, five over n all over one plus uh, two over n. So as n goes to infinity, the numerator goes to one, the denominator goes to one. So this is equal to ln of one, which is equal to zero. Since the limit exists, therefore the sequence a sub n is convergent. Okay. Next uh, problem, so let's find uh, the uh, limit of uh, this uh, sequence here. So limit of uh, a sub n as n goes to infinity, which is uh, limit of uh, cosine of n squared times pi all over three n squared plus one as n goes to infinity. So this uh, cosine function is continuous everywhere. All right, so as long as uh, the limit of this expression exists, then we can uh, insert this uh, limit here and the limit of this one is just the cosine of the limit of this expression, okay? And what is the limit of that one? If you look at this uh, expression here, we know that the limit of this is equal to one third, okay? Because when you're looking for limit at infinity, you're actually looking for the limit of the dominant term in the numerator and dominant term in the denominator. You have this one here. And uh, this one uh, goes to pi over three as n goes to infinity. So the limit of that one, we can write it down as a cosine of uh, the limit as n goes to uh, infinity of this uh, expression here and uh, what I can what we'll do now is to divide the numerator and denominator by n squared and that will give you a uh, pi over a uh, three plus uh, one over n squared okay 
So that is uh, multiplying the numerator and denominator by one over n squared, which is the same thing as dividing the numerator and denominator by n squared. And uh, from here, it is clear that the limit of this uh, denominator here is equal to three because uh, this goes to zero. So therefore, this is uh, equal to the cosine of pi over three. And what is uh, cosine of pi over three? It is equal to one half. Since the limit exists, this uh, sequence a sub n is convergent. Next, let's look at this uh, sequence here, which is a sub n equal to uh, n factorial over n raised to n. So how do we find this, uh, the limit of this uh, sequence? So here we're going to try to apply squeeze uh, theorem. So take note that uh, this uh, n factorial over n raised to n here, okay, is of course, it is greater than or equal to zero. So we're assuming here that uh, our n is uh, greater than or equal to one, okay? So you have there greater than or equal to zero, but actually n factorial by definition is n times, you have there n minus one, and then you have times n minus two, Okay, so let me write this one as uh, like this. Okay, n minus one times n minus two times uh, and so on, times uh, two and then times one. And n raised to n, so it's like we have uh, n copies of n. So let's write that down as uh, something like this, over n, over n, okay, and then over n, and so on, okay. So you have here over n and then over n. So as you can see from this one, so the product of our denominators are just equal to n raised to n. And of course the product of all the numerators here is equal to n factorial. Now, since uh, we're planning to use a uh, squeeze uh, theorem, if we look at these uh, expressions here, okay, the numerator is uh, always uh, less than or equal to the denominator. So therefore, we have, uh, in this case, this is uh, always less than or equal to one. It's actually equal to one. This one, it is strictly less than one, but I can also write it as less than or equal to one and so on. Up to this one, it is less than or equal to one. Okay, for n greater than or equal to two, all right? So uh, if uh, n is equal to one, of course, we only get one over n, okay? So in this case, we can use uh, an upper bound, the function, okay, or the sequence uh, one over n, okay? So we have here a factor, this uh, factor here, is just less than or equal to one. You're just multiplying positive numbers that are less than or equal to one. So you would expect that the product is less than or equal to one. So when you multiply that by one over n, the product will be less than or equal to one over n. So if we let this uh, function here to be our b sub n and uh, this, uh, okay, it's like you have a sequence of uh, zeros, okay? And then another sequence here, c sub n, which is equal to one over n for any n. So since, uh, since uh, limit of uh, b sub n, uh, or let's write it down first, uh, okay? So since in this case, your b sub n is less than or equal to your a sub n, which is less than or equal to c sub n. And in this case, the limit 
of uh, b sub n as n goes to infinity is equal to zero, which is also the same thing as the limit of the c sub n as n goes to infinity. So by squeeze uh, theorem or sandwich uh, theorem, so by squeeze uh, theorem, we can conclude that the limit of uh, a sub n as uh, n goes to infinity is equal to zero. Since the limit exists, we can conclude that the sequence a sub n is convergent. Next problem. So now let's look at this one here. So we're given a sub n equal to five raised to n over a three raised to n plus 10. Again, same as the technique that we've been using to evaluate limit of rational functions. This is your dominant term in the denominator. So we divide the numerator and denominator by this dominant term. So we compute for limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity, which is equal to limit of five raised to n, three raised to n plus 10 as n goes to infinity. And uh, dividing the numerator and denominator by uh, three raised to n, okay? So we have here, dividing the numerator and the denominator by three raised to n, we'll get limit as uh, n goes to infinity of, you have here five over three to the n over, you have here one plus 10 over three raised to n. Now, since uh, this uh, base here is uh, greater than one, we know that this numerator goes to what? Okay, it goes to infinity as uh, n goes to infinity. Now, uh, this uh, term in the denominator goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So therefore, the limit is uh, equal to infinity. Since it's infinity, it's not a real number. We conclude that the sequence a sub n is divergent. Moving to our last uh, problem here. So let's uh, determine whether this uh, sequence here is uh, convergent or divergent. Okay, let's now move to our last problem. So let's determine whether this uh, sequence is convergent or divergent. So again, we compute for limit of uh, a sub n as n goes to infinity, which is equal to limit of uh, one plus uh, five over n raised to two n as n goes to infinity, okay? So if we look at this one, the base here, as n goes to infinity, it goes to one. And the power or the exponent goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So the limit here is in the form one raised to infinity, which is actually one of the indeterminate forms. If you have a limit, something like this, it is an indeterminate form. So you may apply here El Hopital's rule, but I think to easily evaluate the limit, you just have to recall the definition of E. So what is one way to define the number E? So the number E, this irrational number, okay? Real number, okay? E is defined to be the limit of one plus one over M raised to m as m goes to infinity. So that is uh, one way to define this uh, number e. It's the limit of uh, this expression as m goes to infinity. So if we know this fact, so we can easily compute for the limit of this uh, sequence. So we may write it as limit as n goes to infinity of, you have here one plus, we want to look uh, 
uh, at this, uh, we want this to look uh, like this. It should be one over M. So we need to write this five over N as one over N over five, okay? And we can write our numerator as uh, we need to produce uh, N over five here. But since the power is uh, 2n, so we need to multiply this uh, n over 5 by, of course, in this case, by 10. So that when you take the product, it's equal to 2n. So now we can write this down as a limit as m goes to infinity. So we're going to have a change of variable here. 1 plus 1 over m raised to m times 10. Okay, but rule on exponents, uh, I can actually write this down as this expression and then quantity raised to 10. What is the m here? m is equal to n over 5. And uh, take note that uh, as n goes to infinity, this m here also goes to infinity. So now since uh, we know that the limit of this uh, expression as m goes to infinity is equal to e, so therefore this limit is just e raised to 10. And since this is just a real number, we can conclude that the sequence a sub n is convergent. So for you to easily evaluate this, uh, for example, the limit of this kind of expression. So it is helpful to remember that uh, the limit of let's say one plus uh, a over n, okay? So let me write this as uh, a over n, and then raised to n as n goes to infinity is just equal to e raised to a. And uh, this is true for, this is for any a, any real number a. So if you know this fact, okay, you can easily evaluate this one here because uh, you can just uh, compute for this uh, limit here, okay, without the two. And the limit of that one is just equal to e raised to five. And then of course, quantity squared, you'll get e raised to 10. So therefore, you can conclude immediately that your sequence is convergent.